Welcome to the Rolling Stones Museum of New Jersey, Part 4, the 1990s. In the beginning of 1990, the Rolling Stones had a special on Fox TV from the Steel Wheels tour from their show in Atlantic City in December of 89. And there was a section of the show that was in 3D, so if you went to 7-Eleven, you would get 3D glasses for that part of the show. And this is a in-store uh, display that held uh, the glasses. And you can see it has a stand up here. And you were able to get the glasses to watch those three songs that were done in three dimension. And this is what the actual 3D glasses look like. With the steel wheels, tongue and you could look through it and see everything in 3D. In 1991 the Rolling Stones released another live album with a couple new studio tracks. This one's called Flashpoint and you can see this is my sealed copy with the sticker showing that has the new hit singles High Wire and Sex Drive by 1991, when this was released, vinyl was not being produced so much. Mostly everything was on CD, so these particular vinyls in the 90s were hard to find and still are to this day. Inside the Flashpoint album, it came with a large album-sized color booklet showing pictures from the 89 and 90 tour. There's a nice picture of Keith with his Telecaster and Mick with one of his hats. This is what the label looks like for Flashpoint. Recorded live, 8990 Steel Wheels Urban Jungle World Tour on a white label. And here's the flip side. It's got the two new studio tracks. The last two studio tracks with Bill Wyman, High Wire, and Sex Drive. Here's an in-store counter display advertising the new live album Flashpoint. And on the bottom it says featuring 15 classic lives plus the new hit singles High Wire and Sex Drive. So this is a, a triangle record store display. Hard to find these. And Flashpoint was released on CD but also a special CD collection called Flashpoint and Collectibles which was a gatefold double CD. It came with the same miniature booklet from the large booklet from the album and it had the regular Flashpoint album but it also had, if we open up the book here, a collectibles disc featuring extended mixes and uh, tracks that were from Steel Wheels that were not on Steel Wheels or extended versions and some other live tracks not featured on Flashpoint. And that came with another collectibles booklet. It was a simple collectibles booklet with just the songs that were not on uh, other albums previously from the 80s. So the back was blank and the front just had the collectibles with the tongue. So this was actually the first single off of Flashpoint, the studio version of High Wire. This was released in England. And then the flip side has the live 2000 light years from home. And this is the 7 inch vinyl that came with the picture sleeve for High Wire. Notice how it has the small hole 
in the center. The next single off Flashpoint was Sex Drive and this is the 45 picture sleeve. It came with two versions of Sex Drive, the single edit and the Dirty Hands mix released in the UK. This is the 45, the single edit on the A side. This has the larger hole in the center and the B side was the Dirty Hands mix. Special version taken from Flashpoint. The next single off of High Wire, Ruby Tuesday. This is the 45 from England. And you could see that the flip side, Play With Fire, live, was actually not taken from Flashpoint. That did not appear on Flashpoint. Just the Ruby Tuesday did. So another advantage of buying the singles. Here's the 45 Ruby Tuesday and then the flip side is also showing Ruby Tuesday but it has the play with fire as well. It's a double single. Actually Ruby Tuesday is on one side and side two is the play with fire. So one song on each side. It's not as clear on these 45s. So in late 91, early 92, the Stones released a movie called At The Max, which was shown in IMAX theaters across the world and the nation. And it was taken from the 1990 European tour. And this is a very rare, hard to find on vinyl. It's also available on CD. But this is Jumpin' Jack Flash on side one, taken from Flashpoint, but side two, Tumbling Dice, is not taken from Flashpoint. It's actually taken from the movie at the max. So very hard to find uh, 45 and picture sleeve. So here's the vinyl, Jumpin' Jack Flash from Flashpoint on side A. But on side B, we have Tumbling Dice, and it's taken from At The Max. Very hard to find. Here's my ticket stubs from the Rolling Stones At The Max movie, which was shown at the Beacon Theater in New York. The Beacon, also a popular place where Keith Richards has played several times, but this was a big deal going to see it at the Beacon in New York, Saturday, January 4th, 1992. Okay, this is a one-of-a-kind item, the only one that exists in the world, and you'll probably never see this. In 1993, promoting Wandering Spirit, Mick Jagger appeared on Saturday Night Live, and in a skit he played the part of Henry the Butler, and this is a cue card that was actually held right in front of Mick Jagger's face to read as he came in, which I got from one of the stagehands that I knew. So the card says Mick in. It's hard to read because I have it wrapped in cellophane as the ink's been fading over the years. But Mick says, Lady Camilla, this package just arrived. I believe it's from the Prince of Wales. And that was the whole thing with that tampon and the prince and then Julia says oh thank you Henry and she opens it and then Mick exits so a very quick one-liner Mick played Henry the butler in 1993 on Saturday Night Live and this is the actual cue card blank on the back but Mick read right off of this when he came in for his skit for Saturday Night Live In 1994, the Rolling Stones released their first album without Bill Wyman, with Daryl Jones on bass, and it was called Voodoo Lounge. 
So Voodoo Lounge was released on vinyl, but in a limited run. Most of them were on CD and cassette. And this is a copy of my sealed vinyl Voodoo Lounge on Virgin. And if you notice the track listings, after through and through, we're missing the final song, Mean Disposition. Same thing on the cassette. It ends with through and through. No mean disposition. So Voodoo Lounge was a double LP, a single CD, single cassette, and it was a gatefold that opened up and it had the Voodoo skeletons that became part of the advertising for Voodoo Lounge in 1994. Again, here's the track listing, but no mean disposition. The inner sleeves, which maybe you haven't seen because of the limited vinyl run, are heavy stock colored paper with the Voodoo Lounge graphics. The vinyl on the LP kind of grayish white with just three or four songs on the side. Here's the other side, four songs on this side. So this is the CD of Voodoo Lounge. This is my promotional copy, not for sale. And you can see the track listing here. And on CD, we get Mean Disposition. So only on CD, not vinyl, not a 45 and not on cassette. Here's the first single, the first 45 with picture sleeve from Voodoo Lounge. This is Love is Strong and it's a three song 45. On side one we have Love is Strong and then side two The Storm which was a bonus cut not available on the album plus a remix of Love is Strong. And here's the 45 of Love is Strong. It's on a white label, but it's not a promo. And then you could see on the flip side we have two so songs, The Storm and then the Love is Strong extended remix. The second single, Out of Tears. And this is the 45 with picture sleeve. It's an extended play because we have Out of Tears, the Don Was edit on side one, and side two we have the Bob Clear Mountain remix, but we also have I'm Gonna Drive, another non album bonus cut, not available on the album. So the 45 Out of Tears. So here's the 45, the vinyl, Out of Tears, Don Was, edit on one side, also a white label but not a promo, another version of Out of Tears, and then the non-album track, I'm Gonna Drive. There were so many promotional items that went with Voodoo Lounge to promote the album and the tour, which was sponsored by Budweiser. So here's one example. This is a tall metal sign with the Voodoo Lounge insignia and the band in front of the brick wall, unlike any place you've ever been. This is actually a single-sided promo. The back of this one, of the metal, is just plain white, and the front has the color metal. Now the same sign also came for a display, store display or liquor store display on cardboard. So it's just like the metal one. I'll put them side by side. It's about the same size, but this cardboard one is a double-sided. So a double-sided cardboard. I'll put them side by side here. The double-sided uh, cardboard and the single-sided metal 
uh, Voodoo Lounge, sponsored by Budweiser Promotional Banners. This was an in-store display at Sam Goody, or one of the record stores, to promote Voodoo Lounge. A couple box sets that they released with Voodoo Lounge. This is the I Go Wild box set. And we'll open that up and see what it looks like on the inside. So inside the box set of I Go Wild we have a black and white picture again with the voodoo skeletons and then there's a live shot from Mick from the tour. So this was released after the the tour started and here's Woody and Keith so it comes with a nice uh, booklet on the inside. Another photo with the whole band for the first time mine is Bill And this is the CD that came in there. It's got the CD and some postcards and different mixes of I Go Wild. The LP version, the couple live version, and a couple other versions. So here's a few of the postcards that are inside with the CD and the different uh, mixes as well. Stone started getting into computers and computer technology in the mid 90s. So, this is the Voodoo Lounge CD ROM, which was interactive. And you could find yourself in the bar with the Stones and other places. And it worked on most computers. And it was pretty uh, innovative for the time. And there's Mick waiting for you inside the Voodoo Lounge. And inside this is what the CD-ROM looked like. So you could insert this into your computer and go interactive. This was actually released a little bit later after Voodoo Lounge had been out. This is one of my favorite displays for Voodoo Lounge, the Voodoo Lounge light box. This runs on electricity. So it's got like a, an opaque picture of the skeletons in the back and then a cardboard one in the front. And you've got the Voodoo Man sticking out of the front. It's got the three light holes. I'll take a look around the side. It's a pretty big box. And it's got the electric cord, so it's blank on the box and the back. The top has the three lights. But this is a really cool record store display. The Voodoo Lounge light box. Here's another huge display that's over six feet tall. I put a Gibson Les Paul guitar next to it so you get a sense of the size of it. But this is similar pictures to the cardboard and metal box. This is cardboard as well. But this is about six and a half feet tall. Same picture with the Voodoo Lounge and a big bottle of Bud. And this has a, it's blank on the other side but it's a big cardboard with a piece that lets it stand up. But this is a huge Voodoo Lounge promo cardboard display. Here's another really large display for the Voodoo Lounge tour. 94-95 showing a vast array of tongues from all the different countries. Right, here's a poster that's just too large to hang or display. It's the I Go Wild poster showing Mick Keith there in the background. It's really big and it says how it's available on CD with the four unique live postcards which I showed you.
the limited edition 7 inch picture disc which reminds me I've got to find that to show you and this was from England because it says to look out for them at Sheffield and London Wembley Stadium that would be in 1995 so this is the Rolling Stones huge I Go Wild poster so speaking of the I Go Wild 7 inch picture disc this is it showing the encore at the end of the show and the flip side another shot of Mick and the serial number for the picture disc of I Go Wild it came in its own special plastic sleeve the I Go Wild sleeve with the Virgin barcode and the uh, limited edition serial number. This is number 7700 out of 10,000. And the same thing on the other side, plastic. Of course, in 1994, there was no such thing as DVD. If you wanted to watch the Stones at home, you needed to get a VHS. And very early on in the 94 Voodoo Lounge tour, the Stones put out a souvenir video taken from the second night, I believe, of the uh, Stones at Giant Stadium. And it was uh, an abbreviated video, not the whole concert, live from Giant Stadium. But this was put out very quickly while the tour was going on from Giant Stadium. Then at the, towards the end of the tour, after they did a pay-per-view from Miami on Thanksgiving weekend, later on the Stones released not the full concert, but a good portion of that concert that they did down in Miami. And they did the acoustic set in the middle. So two videos released in 94 95 for the Voodoo Lounge tour. So just a handful of ticket stubs from the shows I attended in 1994. This is opening night at RFK Stadium, August 1st, 1994. Of course it says then, no cameras, no recording, but there it is. This is the Friday show in August at Giant Stadium in New Jersey. This is the ticket stub from the Sunday show, which I believe is the show that they did the recording for that for that video. And the Monday, August 15th show at Giant Stadium as well. And my ticket stub from Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia for the Friday, September 23rd, 1994 show. Just wanted to mention from the year before, the Stones released another greatest hits called Jump Back, and it was from 71 to 93, and this is a vinyl copy. It was released on CD, but hard to get on vinyl even back then and it was uh, you know pretty nice album with all their all their big hits up until just before the Voodoo Lounge was released and just a quick picture of the label a lot going on in there this is the Voodoo Lounge 1994-1995 world tour tour book pretty thick book with a lot of colored pictures on the inside inside we see a green screen shot of the stones when they were filming the love is strong video inside we even have a picture of the band from the 60s with Brian Jones and some drawings of the voodoo images and part of the stage design and inside some rehearsing pictures, an old picture of Charlie.
It's a pretty tall book. The back is somewhat blank. So the inside is uh, pretty good. On the inside we also have the centerfold, the big voodoo person fold out. So this comes out, folds down, like to a centerfold. And you can see some old pictures of the band. Let me open this up. So it's a pretty big old shots as well. So they went way back with some old pictures in the centerfold fold out of the Voodoo Lounge tour booklet. And before moving on, I did forget to show a picture of the 1990 European tour Urban Jungle tour book. So the Steel Wheels Tour of America became Urban Jungle in Europe and Japan. So it's a pretty big book with a lot of nice color pictures on the inside. And again, they went back and showed some old pictures of the band from the 60s, and they advertised all the different albums and a lot of different Steel Wheels tour, tour shots in there. And of course, they always put pictures and descriptions of the uh, supporting cast, a little different from the uh, American tour, slightly. We had Lorelai McBroom instead of Lisa Fisher. Of course, Bernard Fowler was there, but they had Sophia Jones. So this is the 1990 Urban Jungle tour book. Orange and yellow on the back. Inside the Urban Jungle monster and a description and a list of all the different tour personnel. Quite a big list on the inside. So that's the uh, Urban Jungle tour book. In 1996, coming off of their Voodoo Lounge tour of Europe, the Rolling Stones released Stripped, a combination of live tracks taken from some club shows and also some studio tracks that they redid. And this is a copy of my sealed stripped vinyl. And these are kind of hard to find. There was a limited vinyl release of these albums in the 90s. So this is my sealed copy of Stripped on Virgin. In my non-sealed copy, it's a double album. And each inner sleeve came with a black and white picture and the uh, different track listings and even the words uh, to the songs and Little Baby was released for the very first time this is what the label looks like on the 12 inch vinyl black label just three or four songs on each side released by Virgin a few odds and sods during that Voodoo Lounge 94-95 tour while the Stones were recording Stripped. This is the 94-95 merchandise catalog, a tall, thin uh, booklet, and it had uh, different things that you could order, uh, shirts and jackets. and hats. So the Voodoo Lounge 94-95 merchandise catalog. Here's a bumper sticker given out by the local New York radio station K-Rock 92-3. Bumper sticker. This is an advertisement for Stones People magazine. Subscribe now. The tour is on promoting South Africa 95. And it also had some shirts that you could buy as well. This came out of the Netherlands. Here's a ticket from the 95 Voodoo Lounge tour, sponsored by Volkswagen. This was the Sunday, July 16th, 1995 ticket from Wembley Stadium. 
while the Stones were rehearsing for the Voodoo Lounge tour of 94-95. They were rehearsing in 93, and Ron Wood was doing some paintings of the group, and this is a catalog advertising his paintings that he did in 93. And inside there's a picture of him doing the painting and a few of the uh, paintings that he did as well. Woody and Charlie. Charlie and Mick. And it opens up. There's Mick on guitar. Keith in the Voodoo Lounge. Keith and Charlie. And another one of Keith. So this is a, a promo advertisement of uh, Ron Wood's etchings that he did in 93 while they were rehearsing for the 94-95 Voodoo Lounge tour. And this was shown at the San Francisco Art Exchange. This is one of my favorite displays. The in-store cardboard three-dimensional display promoting the album Stripped and it's got the shadow background with the stones and their sunglasses in the alley so this is a, a stand and you can see this is the back piece and then it's got the band members in a separate cardboard piece up front with the stripped banner going across and in the back it's held together by a, a stand so you could display that in the store so this is one of my favorite one of my larger displays the stripped in-store record display promoting the 1996 album stripped in the mid 90s the Rolling Stones switched record labels over to Virgin and they put out a promotional box or boxes with the original artwork slipcase for the CDs. So this one is the Mick Taylor years featuring the albums on which Mick Taylor appeared. And it comes with some slide out drawers containing the CDs and a booklet. And there's a picture of Mick Taylor on the back. And this box set contains the booklet, certificate signed by Mick Taylor, which I'll show you, and the Sticky Fingers, Exile, Goat's Head Soup, and It's Only Rock and Roll CDs. So let's pull out the drawers and see what we have. So this drawer we pull out the collector's edition of Exile and It's Only Rock and Roll. Goat's Head Soup, Sticky Fingers. This is the large album size book that came in the box set. And it has different things about the Mick Taylor years. And here is the Mick Taylor autographed certificate. So limited edition of 2500. So here's his autograph this is number 847 and a few pictures from inside the Mick Taylor years uh, booklet it's quite a thick booklet with quite a few shots of of the band from the Mick Taylor years this next box set for Virgin is 1975 onwards so of course this one features the discs that were released during the Ron Wood era and this same has 72 page booklet a signed certificate by Ron Wood and it has the black and blue some girls emotional rescue and tattoo you as well so let's open this up so here's the Emotional Rescue, comes with a miniature poster, Tattoo You, Black and Blue CD, 
and some girls. Of course, the some girls is missing the original faces with Lucia Bull, Raquel Welch, and others. And this is the large album size booklet that came in this particular box set, and it has multiple pictures of Ron Wood through the years from faces, pictures, all the way through uh, with the stones. And this is the limited edition of 2500, a low number, number 186 of Ronnie Wood with his signature. Now he signed this in, let me can angle this, you can see the, uh, the gold ink, Ronnie Wood. So this is the picture inside the booklet. And a few of the pictures from the Ron Wood years with his nice black Gibson and Ronnie with some of his artwork and with Keith and Charlie. So it's a nice, nice big booklet with all the Ron Wood years photos. Back of the booklet has a nice press conference picture of Keith and Woody. From the stripped album and CD, this is a promo of Wild Horses from the stripped album. So it has a edited version, the I'm Free take from stripped, and then the actual album version of Wild Horses from Strip. So this is for promo only, not for sale. A lot of promo CD singles were released in the 90s as well on silver discs. The ones later on came out as CDR, but this is a silver Wild Horses promo. In 1997 the Stones released their next studio album and it would have been their last one for several years before a bigger bang in the mid-2000s, but this was Bridges to Babylon. And this is my copy of the sealed 12-inch vinyl, which I didn't realize at the time, but finding out these days that this is a very rare and sought-after vinyl, 2LP vinyl. These were limited runs, so there weren't too many vinyls pressed for Bridges to Babylon, so they are going for quite a bit of money. So I have not opened this one up. This is my sealed Bridges to Babylon LP with the famous lion. This is a promotional album flat for Bridges to Babylon. It has the same cover as the album, but the back has the Bridges to Babylon font announcing the record on Virgin Records. The first single off Bridges to Babylon was Anybody Seen My Baby? And this is the next single, Saint of Me. And this is the 7 inch vinyl picture sleeve. And the back shows that it has the Saint of Me single edit and a non-album track that did not appear on Bridges to Babylon anyway you look at it. So this is the Saint of Me single edit 7 inch 45 and the label and the flip side with any way you look at it. Another single off Bridges to Babylon Out of Control. This is the promo CD. Let's try to focus that in there. We've got the album version the radio edit, the Don Was live remix, and then what's called the call out hook, where a radio station would play a portion of it to promote the single or the album. So this is the out of control promo single CD. For promo use only, not for sale. And this is the Saint of Me CD promo single. Same cover as the 45 
vinyl sleeve with an album and single edit version and another call out hook. And the label and the color of the label look just like the 7 inch vinyl. Promotional only. Not for sale. Saint of Me from Bridges to Babylon. So to promote Bridges to Babylon and announce their World 97-98 tour, the Stones held a press conference. And these are some private photos that I have obtained from that press conference. I know Ron Wood had a, a CD of the album. They were going to play some tracks. Somebody dropped it. But here, here's a sampling of some of the pictures. You can see the World Trade Center in the background there. More private shots of the band. Mick went out into the audience, made believe he was a reporter, and asked if this was going to be the last tour. And of course, it wasn't and won't be. This is a merchandise catalog that was distributed during the 97-98 tour. It's got the same cover as the tour program, but this is the uh, merchandise catalog. And here's the back of the catalog with some ads for the merchandise. This is a little ad for a Bridges to Babylon checkbook before the days when everybody was paying online, everybody paid by check. So this is the embossed checkbook cover and you can have a different picture or emblem or design of your of your checks. So these are the different different styles of checks for this uh, ad Rolling Stones rock and roll your way to the bank here's some of my ticket stubs from all the concerts I saw in 97 98 so this was October 12 97 at the vet in Philly and this was uh, one of the last concerts there because they uh, tore the stadium down. They tore Veteran Stadium down. This was from Giant Stadium. They later tore that down as well. This was from October 16th, 97. I had nice floor seats there. Right in front of the second stage. And the next day, when they were doing concerts back-to-back, -back, now they take three, four days off in between. But this was the next day, October 17th. One of my best seats, row 7, right in front of the stage on the floor. This little book it, booklet is an advertisement for upcoming events at Madison Square Garden for early 98. And here's a picture of the Stones on the cover of that booklet. So this is a coming events 98 stones at Madison Square Garden. And some of my ticket stubs from those shows at Madison Square Garden. This was the Wednesday, January 14th, 98 show. Sat behind the stage there, but it was pretty good. A couple days later, on Friday the 16th, at the Garden. And the next night was kind of special. The Saturday, January 17th, 98 show at the Garden. As I was waiting for the band to come on, I recognized Keith Richards' guitar tech, Pierre de Beaupart, who was walking around saying hello to friends, maybe checking on the sound system. And I was one of the, maybe the only person that recognized him. And I went up to him and 
introduced myself and I told him that I knew that he was actually one of the guitarists on the Bridges to Babylon album and he was surprised that I knew that so he was happy to talk with me and ask me where I was from from New Jersey and he was nice enough to sign my ticket stub to Larry from Pierre de Beauport right on the floor by the floor of the uh, by the stage at the garden before the stone show Pierre was also nice enough he reached into his pocket and gave me one of Keith Richards picks I'm not sure if Keith had used it in rehearsal or for any other shows but this was a pick that either was used or was going to be used by Keith Richards at Madison Square Garden so that was nice of Pierre to give me this Rolling Stones Keith Richards guitar pick right from Pierre himself a couple of backstage passes from that Bridges to Babylon tour this is a hospitality patch an all-access pass to the Bridges to Babylon this was in a laminated ID number another laminated Bridges to Babylon World Tour 97-98 octagon shaped special guest Seahorses Pass I guess maybe they were an opening act This was a little flyer. Castle presents the Bridges to Babylon World Tour 97-98. This was from the UK, so it was announcing the stadium shows at Wembley in Edinburgh, where they recently played, and Sheffield in the summer of 98. So this is uh, also a flyer and how you can get uh, tickets and the hotline but a nice little souvenir brochure blank on the back lying on the front another one of my favorite displays this is a huge Sam Goody window light box display promoting the Bridges to Babylon album so this is kind of opaque so this went in the light box and the light came through highlighting the Bridges to Babylon lion this is made out of vinyl material so it's thick vinyl it's about three feet by three feet I've always been meaning to put this back into another light box but one of my favorite Bridges to Babylon displays the huge record store window light box display promoting bridges to Babylon there were tons of bridges to Babylon promotional posters so this is just one of several that I have and this was put out by by Virgin for either in-store or, or home use promoting bridges to Babylon and another poster promoting the album Bridges to Babylon coming in stores September 30th the Stones were nominated for a Grammy for their song Anybody See My Baby from Bridges to Babylon and this is a unused in-store record tent uh, display that was used to promote the CD of the same name the 1998 Grammy nominees you could see some of the other artists Sheryl Crow and the Rolling Stones are in there so this is uh, the 1998 Grammy nominee in-store CD promotion display so just a sampling of the thousands and thousands of newspaper, magazine, and other clips and promotional things that are available. This is from the Beggar's Banquet magazine 
Stone's not fading yet. Going into their Voodoo Lounge tour from 1999 on the front of the travel section of the Newark Star Ledger. Groupies can tour Rolling Stones, Haunts, and England where they did all their touring and recording and where they lived. An article about Mick appearing with the Chieftains doing the Long Black Veil. Always in the tabloid section, this is about Bill Wyman's son dating his ex-girlfriend Mandy's mother. The Asbury Park Press in 94 saying that the Stones have the ultimate oldies show. Keith Richards becomes a grandfather. Big article and picture with Keith from the New York Times. Stone's icon, rock survivor. An article about Stripped and doing the Dylan song Like a Rolling Stone. And a concert shot from USA Today. Another from the Star Ledger, Mick Jagger talking about his son. There's just too many thousands and thousands of newspaper clips and prints and things to show everything. Just a taste of what's in my collection. A full page ad promoting the Mick Jagger biography. The unauthorized story. Jagger. The surprise gig in 95 in Amsterdam. The art section of the New York Times in 1994 about the Stones concerts. Raunch and roll with the Stones after 50 years old and 50 years. Of course the 90s saw Bill Wyman leave his last tour, 1990, he announced his departure in 93. And then right before Voodoo Lounge, Daryl Jones came on the scene, has been with them ever since. This is an article about the unknown Rolling Stone, Daryl Jones, joining the Stones. In 1999, towards the end of the 90s, the Stones did a tour called the No Security Tour of 99 and they put out an album from songs from concerts from 1998 the name of the album was No Security and this is a promotional album flat it says Rolling Stones No Security live from the Bridges to Babylon tour this is a copy of my sealed No Security double vinyl and it had a lot of interesting songs that were not on previous live albums before I'm not going to show the front cover because actually this is my least favorite Rolling Stones album cover and I don't want it to end up as a thumbnail but this is the sealed no security double vinyl one of the singles was Memory Motel this has an alternate picture. This is a nice picture. This should have been the album cover. And it has uh, two takes. It has the uh, the remix, the edited version of Memory Motel, and the LP version that appears on No Security. And this is what the disc looks like on the promo Memory Motel. This is a sealed promotional writing tablet with just some paper to take notes on one of the promotional items from No Security and this is a, a coupon that was given out to get a free concert photo it was of Keith Richards smoking up in fumes so this is a promotional coupon that you had to send away to get the uh, picture
this is a promotional album sampler from No Security, so it's uh, multiple songs, and it includes the songs you see here, Give Me Shelter, Waiting on a Friend, The Last Time, Sister Morphine, and You Got Me Rocking. So a five-track promotional CD called the No Security Sampler. This is hard to see, but this is something that you don't see all the time. This was known as the dumpster demo. These were made and then thrown in the dumpster, and somebody found them. So most of them appear a little scratchy. But this was the original No Security Memory Motel Live radio edit, 4 minutes, 29 seconds. This is actually a CDR demo that they were going to put out, and... They were not just recalled, they were thrown out and then found. So this is Memory Motel 429. The versions I showed you earlier on the legit promo for Memory Motel. The radio remix was 4 minutes and 40 seconds and the LP, the longer version, 552. Just going back a little bit, I had forgotten earlier to show you this uh, tear-shaped out of Tears CD single that the Stones put out from Voodoo Lounge. This is my sealed copy and this has the uh, different edit of Out of Tears plus a non-album track I'm going to drive. The Sparks Will Fly clean non-cursing edit and then another remix of Out of Tears. So two versions of Out of Tears and this is what it looks like opened up and it comes with like a little velcro button so you just fold it up and there's your teardrop out of tears maxi single and while we're going backwards just a few other 90's CD singles promo CD singles just to show you this is flip the switch cleverly done where you have to flip it to see the title flip the switch Promo CD single of Sparks Will Fly. Clean version. Album version. This is another album sampler. This is Voodoo Lounge. So it has eight tracks that you could see that were demonstrated here. Including Mean Disposition. And the promo CD single of Saint of Me, Radio, Edit, and the album version from Voodoo, from Bridges to Babylon. So promoting the No Security live album from the 97-98 Bridges to Babylon tour. The Stones toured in 99 in America and the UK. And this is my ticket stub from one of the shows I went to in Philly at the First Union Center, now known as the Wells Fargo Center. This was the Monday night, March 15th, 1999 show. This was the start of the really high ticket prices. Look at the the prices here. We're $300 face. Prior to that, the highest ticket prices were only about $75 to $90 on the Bridges to Babylon tour. But I think this tour started the really high ticket prices, $300. And then a week or so later, up in Hartford, Connecticut, the Sunday night show, March 28th, 99. Now this ticket was only $91 because it was the upper, but the lower sections were in the $300 plus dollar range. Here's another promotional item for the No Security Tour about the photo uh, giveaway and it opened up and it showed all the different photos that you could choose and you could save money on the entire stone show so it was a nice big fan club type of uh, brochure and here's a few more pictures that you could choose from 
from the no security order form. So this is the picture that I chose or won when I sent in for my free concert photo coupon. When I was up seeing the Stones in Hartford in March of 99, my ticket included a night out party ticket at the Brickyard. And this was from the uh, bus party that we took. It was a pre-concert uh, dinner ticket. So that was from 4 to 6. And then the Stones concert, we entered around 7 to 8 o'clock up for the uh, Stones in Hartford. But this is a ticket for the pre-party dinner. Here's a promotional ad to win a Fender Telecaster like Keith plays, put out by the Virgin Megastore Records and you had to answer a couple questions. What was the title of the first single to be taken off of Bridges to Babylon? And the other question was how many Grammy Awards did Voodoo Lounge win? I think they won one for album and the first single Anybody See My Baby. But this was a promotional entry form to win a Fender Telecaster, just like Keith. So as we get towards the end of the 90s, let me show you just the sampling of the collection of uh, not only the, I showed you some newspaper articles and headlines like this one from the Star Ledger where Mick was getting satisfaction from the crowd at the Meadowlands at Giant Stadium. Let me show you my magazine collection. So here's just a sampling of the dozens and dozens of magazine covers featuring the Stones, special editions, different magazines, Pulse with Keith, Masters of Rock, showing an old picture but it's from the 60s, Guitar World, Guitar Magazine, Rolling Stone magazine, a couple comics, Revolver magazine, Mick on the cover of Esquire, and Pulse, and Keith on the cover of Guitar Player, the Satisfaction single on the cover of Food Engineering magazine, couple of record collector magazines talking about the stones in the 60s but these were issued in the 90s American Heritage another old picture stones live couple other Rolling Stone and what an aged Mick would look like that's from Request magazine Vanity Fair, another record collector, American Photo, Musician Magazine, like a bootleg live buyer's guide, a couple different ones from the No Security Tour with tons of, uh, tons of photos, performance with a picture of an autographed guitar, another live buyer's guide. So these are just a sampling of the dozens and dozens of magazines with the stones on the cover in the 90s. So this concludes part four of the Rolling Stones Museum of New Jersey the 1990s. I hope you enjoyed it as well as my previous issues of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I want to thank you very much for watching and I look forward to presenting in my next video as we get into the next, next century 
the Stones in the 2000s and beyond. But for the 1990s, as we say farewell to Bill, thank you for watching. So this concludes part four of the Rolling Stones Museum of New Jersey, the 1990s. I hope you enjoyed it, as well as my previous issues of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to presenting in my next video as we get into the next, next century, the Stones in the 2000s and beyond. But for the 1990s, as we say farewell to Bill, thank you for watching.